after placing all of the different uh, scans of my image together, I've ended up with a full image here that um, I've gone ahead and um, selected or uh, highlighted all the different layers and gone to layer and then merge visible so that they could all become one united drawing. At that point, um, the other thing that I can do is to go ahead and using the magic wand tool, I can go ahead and um, get rid of my background. So I could just go ahead and click on the magic wand, which would then highlight the white area in the background, and then push delete and get rid of the white area so that I'd end up with an image that would just be the black lines and the transparent background um, that you see here. Um, now that this image is complete, the next thing that I want to do is to take the rasterized um, image, which is what happens when you have an image that's in Photoshop, and vectorize it by putting it into Adobe Illustrator. This will also um, make all of my black lines smoother and less pixelated, so that if I tried to enlarge them, I could with my new Adobe Illustrated um, image, I could make them as large as I, I, I wanted them to be. But it would also make them much smoother, and they will make become much blacker, and all the images will fuse even more than what you see in this image here. So at this point, I'm going to go ahead and to save my image, and uh, go ahead and it will save and then close, and then I'm going to take this image and to put it into Adobe Illustrator. So I'll close my image, and I'm going to take my image and drag it down into Adobe Illustrator right here and the image will open in Adobe Illustrator. All right. um, you'll see the, this little window come up, and what you want to do is to push OK. Um, and the next thing that you want to do is to go ahead and I'm going to kind of zoom out of my image a little bit so that you can see the whole thing. Just make it a little smaller, and then I'm going to highlight my image. Let's go to do the select all. There we go. And um, at this point, what I'm going to do is go up to the object, and I'm going to go to Live Trace, and scoot down to Tracing Options, like so. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and continue. And you'll, all of a sudden, you'll see that there's a Tracing Options menu. And if you click on the default button, you'll see that there is a number of different uh, um, types of tracing that you can do. And each one will have stylistically a different kind of effect. So when you have the time, if you want to try and see your images in these different styles, you're more than welcome to go ahead and do it. Um, for our purposes today, I could either choose a simple trace or um, I'm going to try and do the ink drawing one because I want it to... Um, I'm see what that looks like. So I'm going to click Ink Drawing, and then I, and you can also choose. Um, well, just one second. You can also choose Detailed Illustration. You can, you know, I would go ahead and try a couple different ones just to see which one suits your interest the best and in showing your image off um, the best. Um, so we can try Ink Drawing for the first one. And the other thing that you want to do is to go ahead and select the Preview uh, button here, so that. All of a sudden, you can see what your image is going to look like ahead of time. And so it's going to click into preview so that before I trace it, if I don't like how the ink drawing looks, I could go back and choose a different option for myself. And what this is doing is tracing my image to make it into a, a vectorized image. And it will take a couple seconds to one, get going, and two, to do this process. You'll see another window that will hopefully come up shortly. This will take a little bit of time to go ahead and trace, and you'll notice all of a sudden on your window you'll have progress reports. And so, um, you know, if it takes a couple moments, just be prepared to sit here and wait for it. After um, making a preview of my image, I went ahead and traced it, and this is the final result. So now my image is completely vectorized, and if I went ahead and uh, made it larger, you can see how smooth all the images parts of the image are, so that even as much as I wanted to zoom in, there'd be no pixelation of any of the forms that are here, so everything is entirely smooth. I'd want to go ahead and save my image, so I'll go to File, Save, um, and or Save As, and then you can just save it as, and I did in this case, uh, Linear Drawing um, at 15%.
And what I'm going to do now is to close my image. Once I've saved my image as an Adobe Illustrator file and I've put it on my desktop, what I'm going to do is to drag that file back down into Photoshop and open the file in Photoshop. At this point, you'll get this screen. Then go ahead and push OK. And the image has to get rasterized. So now the image is in Photoshop. It's at a very high resolution. But the other thing you'll notice now, which was is different than my initial image, is that once having put the image in Illustrator, that it gets very, very tightly cropped. And so what I would like to do on this is to extend the size of my canvas, which I could do in one of two ways. One thing I can do is go to Image and go to Canvas Size. And you can see it's 22 by 17 and a half. And what I can do is pretty much change that. So let's say if I want to do 24 by 19, I should be able to all of a sudden get a bit more of a border on my image. The reason I want this is that once I go ahead and print it, I want to make sure that my whole image will go ahead and print. So by extending the size of my um, canvas, I now know that that will happen. Um, if I were to go ahead and zoom in on this image, you'll see that like the Illustrator image, that all of the shapes are very um, clean, that there's no pixelation in the shapes, and this is exactly what I want to be able to have, so that if need be, I can go ahead and change the size of my image to whatever scale that I want. At this point, then what I want to do is to go ahead and save my image, and I'm going to now go and get ready to go ahead and print it. So I'm going to go File and Save, and I'm going to um, save it as a Photoshop document. I'll save it to my desktop, and I'm actually going to leave it open, but you just want to make sure that you don't lose any information. You can also save it as a JPEG if you choose to do that. Um, after I've gotten to this point and the image looks exactly how I want to have it, the next thing I want to do is to go ahead and get ready to print my image. And the printing instructions for this are a little bit different than any of the usual printing instructions that you might have. So that if you wanted to follow a step-by-step -step procedure, the other thing that you can do is to go ahead and go to your desktop and go to the TTS Labs file, go to Fall 2009, scroll down to where you get documentation, and you'll find Epson Pro 4, 4800 printing. And to go to that, and to click on the sequence, and which will open a PDF file that I would leave open on your desktop while you go ahead and print, so that if by chance you forget some of the things that are listed here, you have all that information. The next thing I want to do in my printing process is to go to, f and these are all listed on the uh, sheet that's here, actually. We'll make my image a little smaller so you can see the sheet at the same time. There you go. Um, I'll just zoom out a little bit so it fits in my screen. All right, so here's all my instructions. So the first thing, as listed in the instructions, what I want to do is to go to View, Proof Setup, and I'm going to go to Custom, and I want to make sure that the device to simulate right here equals the same thing as this because the setting that I'm going to have is for enhanced matte paper even though I'm printing on transparency. The other thing I'm going to do is to check the paper simulate paper color box and then I'm going to push OK. The next thing I want to do after that is to go to image and I'm going to image size and I want to check to make sure that one, the size of my image is correct, and also that the resolution is correct. And usually on these things, they'll always tell you that you want to print at 300. I have this at 600 just to make sure that because of the detail that I have in my drawing that everything's clear. Potentially, you could change it to 300 if you want. 